Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. I wanted to make um, almost a follow up to the video that pretty much went viral in the community a few weeks ago where I explained how um, I had discovered that long term ketosis can cause issues with the conversion of T4 to T3 and therefore cause thyroid issues, especially in women and especially in women that had um, a tendency towards a thyroid that doesn't work great in the first place. And I got tons and tons of comments. I haven't even made my way through all of them. Um, but the overwhelming majority were saying that me too, right? And as I'm talking, they're gonna come up on the screen. And if you want to read them, you can pause them. I took maybe 25 of the hundreds of comments that I got both direct messages, comments on the video and things like that. So the first thing that I wanted to do is just to give you a little bit of history about myself because there's so many new people here. Um, I First of all, I don't wear prescription glasses. These are blue light and I, I hope that they're not, it's not too, um, the, the studio lights are not too bright. These are blue light blocking glasses and I use them to help with my circadian rhythm um, but I think that they might be a little bit too, a little bit too shiny. So let's just take them off. It's not going to kill me for one night just to um, sit in front of the studio lights. So I know that there's a lot of people who are new here and who don't really know my history. Given that some of the comments, like for sure you don't know my history. Um, so I, I'm from Ireland and I'm from Dublin specifically, and I live right on the border of France and Switzerland um, near Geneva and I've been here for almost five years which is crazy to think about um, and I am a fully qualified nutritionist I am also a certified ketogenic specialist I did my training with Tim Noakes at the Noakes Foundation um, in South Africa so it's not that I don't know what I'm talking about Right, so I got a lot of comments <laughs> about uh, questioning my um, my qualifications, and they're on my website. You can go to my website and look at my qualifications. Um, I started my weight loss journey in two thousand sixteen at two hundred and sixty one pounds, about one hundred and twenty kilos, and I lost the weight using the ketogenic diet: high protein, moderate fat, very low carb ketogenic diet, and. Not once in in that video did I say that um, keto is not a good thing. I, I'm a certified ketogenic specialist. I know how it works, but this big thing was missing. I never had any training on the potential negative side effects. And I think it's because not as many people did keto long term as has been prevalent in the last five years or so. So it's only now we're starting to see potential issues. Um, my philosophy is and always will be that dogma is dangerous in nutrition. It got us to where we are here in the first place with the diet heart hypothesis that cholesterol is responsible for heart disease. It's what got us here in the first place. And I would be it would be completely in unethical of me and completely incompetent of me to just fixate on one thing and not look for possible explanations for certain things that um, maybe didn't sit right with me. It would be unethical of me to continue to say that something is the best you can do when all of the evidence I've seen, and when I talk about the evidence I've seen, I'm talking about um, the hundreds of people that I have coached one-to-one. -one. I had more than 250 people go through my um, keto bootcamp and my own, my new program, the Protein Priority Diet, we've had more than 500 members come through the doors. So I know that we cannot allow dogma to reign when it comes to nutrition because you can go and find the study that will back up whatever your hypothesis is. And I have found studies that back up what my hypothesis is. And you will find studies that refute the studies that I have found. 
that back up my hypothesis. And this is what the problem is with nutrition, that there's always some study done or some theory out there or some metabolic process in isolation that doesn't make sense with certain hypotheses. Um, and that is the major flaw in nutritional science is that it's completely unethical to, um, to, to test humans the way we do on animals. And animal metabolic um, studies and, and animal metabolism, it's just not comparable because it might be close, but we know so little about it that there might be things, that, fundamental things that we are missing where we say, okay, so this will work okay with humans, but in actual fact, the animal is reacting a little bit differently than a human would. So there might be 8 million videos refuting the one I made and that's okay. I'm not interested in fighting anybody. I'm not interested in being shouted down or shouting other people down. What I'm interested in is finding answers to problems that people come to me with. And this is a problem that I have faced myself. Um, and it was that for that reason that it prompted me to create the protein priority diet and to look into why it wasn't working for me when it was working so well for members of my program, but, but I myself got stuck after losing a few kilos. I wanted to make this video because there's always going to be questions that just don't have answers. And in nutrition and in metabolic science, um, it's always gonna be like that because we can't test on humans. We can understand a metabolic process by itself, like the Krebs cycle or the Randall cycle, or um, maybe um, you know how certain things are absorbed. But when you try and put that entire system together, I can guarantee you that we're missing certain fundamental things because it's just so vast and so complex and it's practically impossible to study the whole thing from start to beginning accurately. One of the very fundamental flaws of all nutritional science is that when they are done with human subjects, it requires a lot of recall. So some nutritional studies might say, okay, so we follow these people for five years. Well, that means that, I mean, they might have talked to these people twice in five years. Okay, so how did you eat in the last five years? And then when they meet up with them again, they say, okay, so over the last three years, how did you eat? What did you mostly eat? What did you mostly eat for breakfast? It's like, I can't remember what I had for breakfast last Tuesday. I'm not gonna remember what I had three years ago. Um, and therein lies one of the big flaws. Another flaw is doing animal studies and then applying it to humans. Um, we, we just are not, it's not 100% identical. So we can't say with 100% certainty that this is the case. I mean, we know that if you take a, a, um, in th a theory like it, you can eat all the fat you like and you won't gain any weight, um, it works in theory when you look at the metabolic processes and you, you look at like the Krebs cycle and you look at, um, at how that those macros are metabolized. In theory, you shouldn't. But when I tried it and when others tried it, <laughs> can be sure they gained weight. They did. Um, and when I started to talk about this issue back in that video, I was, it was a tsunami of messages and you can see them, but I've put them up here so you can see the sheer volume of women mainly, but men too, who have come to me and said, thank you. This is exactly what I've experienced. It's exactly the same symptoms. And I'm going to try adding in some easily digestible whole food carbs. Now you cannot, ignore the sheer volume of responses that I got to that video. You can't, we can't ignore it. We can't say, well, you must be wrong because X, Y, Z. Well, then why are so many people experiencing the exact same thing that I have experienced? 
We need to question that. We need to ask why. And that's why I'm saying dogma is dangerous. Dogma has no place in nutrition because when you apply these dietary guidelines and these ways of eating to people, to real people living in real bodies with real metabolisms and real biochemical processes, and it doesn't work the way the theory says it should, then what's wrong? Is it the person who's experienced it? Or like the amount of gaslighting I got, you couldn't have possibly experienced all this. The amount of messages I got saying that I was in menopause. I'm not, I've had my hormones tested, I'm definitely not. Um, but it's, it's just, it's gaslighting on, on a huge scale. You can't be experiencing this because the science says that. Well, we know that the science can be really shaky when it comes to nutrition. Just look at Ansel Keys and uh, the seven country study. He actually did um, the study on 10 countries. He cherry picked his data. Not only that, he went to like countries like Italy and Greece when they were doing fasting for Lent, so they weren't eating much meat. And it all served to support his theory, okay? So what I've done is essentially the same thing. I've gone looking for evidence to support my theory. I have found it. I have gone looking for evidence from real people out on the street who are experiencing the same thing, and I found it. Now, does that mean that I'm saying that I'm 100% right? Never. I don't know whether I'm 100% right, but what I found is evidence that suggests I might be onto something here, plus the sheer amount of people who have come forward to say, me too, this is exactly what I've experienced. I went on keto, did really well, lost a lot of weight, plateaued, stayed there, got more strict, weight started to go back on, and now I have practically all of the symptoms that you talked about in that video. We have, to, we have to be open here, okay? We have to be open to the possibility that we weren't right because otherwise we're just arrogant and um, we, we are just going to end up in the same situation that we did with the low fat um, advice that we got from the 50s on. We have to keep an open mind and we have to ask the question, is this a possibility? Yes, we have certainly seen evidence that it could be. Because again, remember that the science is not perfect. So we can't say with 100% certainty that this is a sure thing. But from the evidence I've seen, from the studies that I've read, and from my own personal experience, knowing what my body feels like, knowing that um, I have had thyroid issues in the past, but they were well uh, my thyroid was well medicated and it was working really well before I did keto. Um, and it was only after I started keto and I had lost a lot of weight, right? So my thyroid was working fine with the um, with the medication because I was able to lose weight and I didn't have any of the symptoms. It was only after the initial year and a half on keto that I started to have these symptoms and then I've been battling ever since to um, to figure out what's going on. We also have to look at the fact that when the people who I have spoken to initially, um, I asked for some volunteers to help. And I've been working with four women um, to see what the reintroduction of carbs looks like for them and for me too. I'm wearing a continuous glucose monitor because I wanna check to see if the added carbs are going to have a detrimental effect on my um, on my blood glucose. I am using my Lumen, my um, metabolic monitor. I'm using this every day to make sure that I am not going like crazy in terms of um, burning sugar. Uh, I'm getting, I got my blood tested twice in the last two months to check on everything, to check on my HbA1c, to check on my fasting insulin, my fasting glucose, sex hormones, thyroid hormones, everything okay so I am doing everything I can to make sure that the advice that I'm giving and the things that I'm talking about are am I able to support them with evidence and again the problem is and the problem will always be that what works for me is not going to necessarily work for you 
and I was really happy to see the amount of videos or the amount of comments sorry that people put up saying that um they've been doing keto for years or carnivore for years and they're, it's working really well and they're really ha healthy and they feel good and it just it helps so much to see those accounts too because it literally proves my point that I'm not saying keto is bad, keto is wrong, or that nobody should do it. In fact, it's the opposite. Keto is a very valuable tool. Um, it's extremely valuable for helping with metabolic disorders, type 2 diabetes, chronic illnesses, um, autoimmune issues like Hashimoto's, for example, is really well um, taken care of using ketogenic diet. Does that mean it's suitable for everybody? Absolutely not. Um, nobody should um, be put on a way of eating that is generalized because it just doesn't work for everybody. Um, so another thing that came up over and over again with people saying that I was probably iodine deficient. Okay, so I live in Europe and it's a lot, I know a lot of the comments came from my American community because I have a very large American community. But the fact is we just don't have the same food here and my sea salt that I use every single day and everything I eat has iodine in it. It's Mediterranean sea salt. It comes from Italy and it is um, fortified with iodine. Okay, so I take iodine every day. I also saw people recommending iodine for Hashimoto sufferers. Iodine for Hashimoto sufferers is really dangerous. Don't do that. Um, Hashimoto's is not a thyroid disorder. It affects the thyroid, but Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disorder. And that's why keto works so well for Hashimoto's because it takes care of those antigens that are aggravating the immune system, that are making the immune system attack the thyroid. And um, that's why Hashimoto sufferers do really well on keto and carnivore is for that reason. I don't have Hashimoto's. I've had my TPO antibodies and my anti-nuclear antibodies tested numerous times and I don't have Hashimoto's. I have the, the kind of lesser clinical hypothyroidism, okay? Um, so, I want, to, I want us to be really careful about the advice that we give, especially in the comments, because it's definitely not one size fits all. Um, we, we, we need to keep an open mind. We need to keep ourselves open to possibilities. And as a part of my work, I am always updating and refreshing the protein priority diet because I want to make sure that everybody has enough knowledge and enough um, information to be able to make the choices that are right for them. There's no set meal plans. There's no, um, no, there's no dogma in the program because it, no, there isn't one thing that works for everybody. So it's really important that we stop digging our heels in and ask, is this something that we need to consider? Is there enough evidence or is there enough um, anecdotal evidence that we, we should take a look at the possibility here? And as you've seen from all of the comments that I've put up here and in this video, we need to look, we need to look at the possibility. We need to look at whether this is something that we need to be careful of for women. And I think that one of the biggest issues I had with comments on the video is the amount of women telling me to leave it up to the men, especially the male doctors, um, to talk about things that I know nothing about, apparently. Um, I'm not a physician and I never claim to be. I'm a nutritionist. Um, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely don't go to male doctors, I go to female doctors because of my own personal experience dealing with male doctors and the fact that nutritional science, med medical science, pharmaceutical science, um, all of those are um, heavily swayed data-wise towards men. And uh, if, you, if you 
don't like what I'm saying, yeah, that's okay. I, I know you might not like what I'm saying, but that doesn't mean that I'm wrong. Um, all you have to do is go read a book called Invisible Women. Um, I'll put the name of the author here because I can't remember off the top of my head. It's Caroline something. Invisible Women. And it's about how big data, so all of the research, all of the science, all of the um, the testing is usually done on males and male bodies and male cells. And the fact is that down to a biochemical level, women are completely different to men. And we don't, we don't have the same reactions to things that men do. So the fact that it was overwhelmingly women who re responded to me, responded to my, um, my call for um, other women to come forward, other people to come forward, it, the fact that it was overwhelmingly women doesn't surprise me. Um, most thyroid sufferers are women. Most thyroid sufferers can be helped with an iodine supplement. I'm not one of them. Um, because especially when you live somewhere like the United States, and even here where I am in Geneva, I, I'm, I'm six hours from the coast, right? And what happens is that when you grow food along the coast, there's iodine in the soil that is aerosoled from the sea. So when, when it's stormy, the sea kicks up aerosol, it, the, the water vapor, the water droplets, and throws them up onto the land that's close to the sea. And um, we would grow the food there, the iodine would be in the food, we'd eat it and everybody's thyroid would be happy. But as the population of the world got bigger and bigger and bigger, we had to move further and further and further away from the coast. So food that is grown in the central areas of like Europe and United States, they don't have that naturally occurring iodine because they're too far from the sea. So a lot, up to, I read a study that, that showed that up to 60% of people with hypothyroid could be fixed with an iodine supplement. Now, again, that's not everybody, right? There's something else going on. There's something else going on with me um, and there might be something else going on with you. But if you are experiencing any of the symptoms that I'm, I'm talking about, there's no harm in trying to add a carrot or some peas to your meal I mean, I'm not talking, I'm not saying that people should go out and like supplement with heroin to, to fix their issues or, you know, go, go eat a six pack of donuts. I would never advise that because that's what got us all sick in the first place. What we need to look at is if I add in a little bit of whole food carbs like carrots or peas or onions or butternut squash or pumpkin, naturally occurring carbohydrates, does it make me feel better? And at what point do I need to stop before my blood glucose gets a little bit out of control? And that's that's the way we should be looking at this. Is there is there real reason to suspect that I am right? Absolutely. The the hundreds and hundreds, more than four hundred messages I got say, yeah, absolutely, I, I have stumbled onto something that we need to take a look at. Am I saying that I'm right and everybody else is wrong? No, <laughs> no. Um, I don't come with that level of arrogance and I never would and I never have. I have always said and I've always coached, do what works for as long as it works and when it stops working, we need to look for something else because there's no point in, we are literally flogging a dead horse and I did it for three years for three, no, for four years, I continued to go even lower carb in ketosis, supplementing with electrolytes, making sure that I was getting my iodine salt, fasting, fa exercising while fasting, um, doing carnivore. And somebody said I didn't do carnivore for long enough. I did carnivore for like six months, I think. Um, I did mostly carnivore. Um, so there is merit here in questioning the dogma. Don't let the dogma rule. Don't take what I'm saying at face value. Don't take what others are saying at face value. Question it. Go and look for evidence that refutes your beliefs because that's what I do all the time. Like, I am consistently looking for evidence to support my theories and evidence to refute them and then weighing up which do i think is 
um, is more likely to apply to me? How do I feel following this protocol? How do I feel following this protocol? For the first year and a half on keto, I felt amazing. Then when I got to my lowest weight, I was cold all the time. My hair started to fall out. Um, I lost lean muscle mass. Um, I couldn't exercise properly. I had no energy. I had brain fog. So it was at that point that I thought that maybe there was something else going on, but I never in a million years would have put two and two together, only that I started to think now about maybe this connection with my thyroid. Maybe my thyroid needs something that I'm not giving it. And glucose seemed to be the answer. Um, so what, I, what I'm asking of you is to come with an open mind, even to my videos. Like I'm never going to sprout, sprout dogma. I, I mean, even... Even from very, very early on here on my YouTube channel, I always said, like, don't eat high fat keto. It's not, there's no need to eat high fat keto. Eat, um, eat high protein, moderate fat. Like, don't, don't follow high protein or high fat keto if you want to lose fat. Um, yet there was a lot of dogma around having to get the fats in and supplementing with MCT oil and drinking butter and coffee and things like that when it wasn't entirely necessary and then the kind of advice started to change a bit and then like last year a diet doctor started talking about high protein diets and then um i think ted nyman started talking about high protein diets and and all of that so it it's something that we need to keep in mind that this will need to keep evolving what we know will have to keep evolving and it should keep evolving as we learn more and we discover more and we see the effects that these protocols, these regimens, these diets have on real people who, and I am a real person. Like the, some of the comments were like deeply personal and like really insulting and really rude. And it's like, um, I think I had, I had a comment that said something like, well, obviously you're not a qualified nutritionist because otherwise you wouldn't have got so fat in the first place. And it's like, well, clearly this is their first time on my channel because you don't know anything about me you don't know that i was morbidly obese then i lost the weight then i became a nutritionist to help people do the same okay so what we need to do is keep an open mind and continue to question is this making me feel good if it's not then there's something wrong and we need to figure out what it is um, continue to question where is the um, the money trail, right? Because that's that's a really big thing. Without putting on the the tin foil hat, that's a it's a really big question to ask. Uh, if you look at the prevalence of non animal milks, like so nut milks and oat milks, and there's a new potato milk now, and the huge increase in um in the availability of non-meat meats, like replacement meats. Um, companies are going where the money is and they will always go in the, where the money is. Me, uh, in my line of work, I'm never gonna be able to compete with those big guys in, in terms of like the the marketing and the propaganda and things like that. They're a, a beast and, and I'm a small voice in the corner. But question me, question what I'm saying, go look for evidence that refutes what I'm saying. Um, and I welcome it. And I said it in that first video that I will welcome discussion. I don't welcome rudeness or bullying or um, being talked down to, being patronized, being um, accused of um, not being qualified. I mean, you can see my, literally my certificates are on my website. You can go see them. Um, so basically my, my ask is to remember that dogma got us here in the first place to where we all needed to figure out how to get better and how to lose the weight and how to reverse di disease and how to reverse diabetes. Dogma is what got us there and we can't afford to have dogma and nutrition anymore and we need to keep an open mind and we need to question and we need to ask the difficult questions like um 
is this what we're doing suitable for the majority of people or is it something that should come with a caveat is it something that should come with a warning um because i'm not the first to say and actually so many of you sent me videos by um keto in the uk she she practically did the same video that i did it's, it was practically the same um so somebody sent me that um, somebody sent me this to the strong sisters um, there's the Armstrong sisters um, who are um, who had similar things um, there's a, a diary of a shrinking mama she's on Instagram um, she had the same thing her thyroid and metabolism bottomed out um, and she regained weight exactly the same story as me exactly identical um, so we need to, instead of saying, you're wrong, you're wrong, charlatan, you're wrong, you're wrong, because the doc the male doctors say so, instead we should say, okay, let's take a look at what the people who are experiencing this are saying, and let's look at what they have in common, and let's look at the variables, because this whole thing of saying, oh, you're just perimenopause or menopausal. I'm sorry, there's 80-year-old women emailing me to say the exact same thing. Are they menopausal? Hardly. I have 30-year-olds. Are they menopausal? Hardly. So to dismiss all of these comments and dismiss all of these experiences is letting dogma in. It It is ignoring what's right in front of our faces, what's right in front of our noses, and I won't have it. Um, I, you, can, um, you can make a million videos refuting what I'm saying, and that's fine, um, but we need to look at why so many of us are experiencing this, and I'm completely open to um, any theories. I am completely open at looking at alt other alternatives. Um, it's this one makes sense, this one, the evidence that, that the studies that I saw support my experience and the experience of more than 400, more than 400, it's not an insignificant number. Um, so I, I don't want this to become a big firefight. Like I'm not going to watch any of those videos. Um, not that, not because I'm not interested in, in hearing an alternative. It's that, um, those of you who have messaged me to say that there are videos out there refuting what I'm saying, I have a feeling that I, I um, of what what it's going to be like, and it it is going to be another case of there, there, woman, shush, shush, sit down, back in your place, kind of thing. But I am always open to proper um, discussion, knees under the table. Um, colleague to colleague discussion I am completely open for that um, I don't claim to know it all right I'm not an extra an expert biochemist I'm not an expert in metabolism I'm not an expert in biology physiology and um, anatomy I didn't go to medical school right and, and I will never claim to know it all I will never claim to be an expert um, but I'm an expert in my body I'm an expert in how I feel and how I eat and how I live and what what makes me feel good and what doesn't make me feel good. So I was able to put all of this together and say, hey, this explains exactly what's happening to me and what has happened to others in the same situation. And I have watched story after story after story of those videos um, saying the exact same thing. So we need to look at it. We need to keep an open mind and we need to question it. Um, but for now, I'm gonna to continue to experiment on myself. I have my Lumen to make sure that I am still metabolically flexible. I have my continuous glucose monitor to make sure that I'm not eating too many carbs because carbs are new to me again. So I have to figure out where is my Goldilocks zone where I'm not spiking cortisol because my blood sugar is getting too low, but it's not so high that I start to cause myself issues with um, insulin resistance again. So, um, I know this is another quite a long video, but it, it required saying just simply because um, I don't want dogma to win the day. I, dogma is dangerous in nutrition and it has no place. Um, so thank you all, to, especially to all my new subscribers. It's really nice to have um, fresh new faces in the community. Um, and if you want to 
have like a more interactive um, relationship with me. I have a free Facebook group. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. I do Weight Loss Wednesday every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Geneva time. I go on live so I can answer your questions. Uh, and it's a really nice supportive group. It's a really nice environment. Um, and many of the people who messaged me saying that they had suffered the same thing are in there. So if you want to start the conversation, just come over and join us over there. It's completely free. Um, it's just a free Facebook group. Um, so, and thank you to everybody who messaged me. Um, I've been overwhelmed by them and I unfortunately haven't been able to reply to everybody, but I am working my way through them. Um, and yeah, just keep questioning and keep asking, is this the right thing for me? Um, and if it's not, let's try and find something that works for you too. Take care. See you next time.